typically people prefer transparency, authenticity, honesty to kind of what they can see right through. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesoming's podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. Well, well, what up, awesome people? I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Awesoming's podcast. Today, we're going to have a great time talking with Logan Burchett and Stephen Plappert of Forecaster, which is founded in Louisville, Kentucky. This episode was actually recorded over a live Lunch and Learn a couple weeks ago, and we are probably going to start breaking episodes up that are longer than 30 minutes into two parts. This one was. So the first part is going to be some of their founding origin and how they got into Techstars and some of the principles they learned. We'll stop there. The following episode will be tech stars and on, but also how they've been running their company amidst a global pandemic. Thanks so much for checking out this episode. Make sure to be on the lookout for part two in the upcoming week. We really appreciate your time. Enjoy. So first things first, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to Awesome Inks podcast. Today we're taking it up a notch. We're going a live video stream uh, for a little lunch and learn. We're going to be hearing from our friends, Logan and Steven in Louisville working with their startup forecaster. I mean, everything COVID related has had to make us pivot, be creative. And so this is a new means to do just that. So if you're tuning in the first time today, hey, my name is Garrett. I work at Awesome Inc. here in Lexington, Kentucky. We help people pursue their definition of awesome. And these two guys we're going to be interviewing, hearing their story about, uh, are doing just that. And we are so privileged to have running mates with them who want to make Kentucky a better place to live and work. And let me tell you, we're really excited to catch you up to speed on all the goodness, because that's what it is, all the goodness that's going on with their company and their lives. And uh, first caveat is about a year ago, I wrote it down, July 16th, 2019, we recorded their whole story of Forecaster, how they founded it, their previous entrepreneurial background experience. So uh, today is not going to be a total recap of all that. We've done that before. This is mostly to hear what is going on in their life, in their journey with their startup, also what uh, what they're looking forward to. So with that, guys, I would love to uh, get a quick recap for the audience. How are you guys doing today? You look great. Doing great. Feeling good. How are you doing today? You know, I can't complain. It's It almost looks like we have a a cool t-shirt thing going on. I wish we would have planned that out. Uh, Steven usually has a a wackier wardrobe than me, I would say. Uh, He's got... I don't know. You've, you've got those like pants that you wear all the time with all the different colors and stuff. I'm more of a straight down the middle type of guy, but I went a little bit crazier today, you know, for our meeting. No, I like it. Yeah. The, the pineapples I've heard are a universal sign of friendship. So I think that's really fitting. And Steven, I have seen those pants before. And um, I watched a video interview. Of, you guys were somewhere in Louisville and those things are hilarious. My brother has a similar pair. Nice. So hope, hopefully you're wearing them today. <laughs> I'm not just the khakis today, but I do no have uh, the Rocco's Modern Life going. So for all you '90s kids out there, <laughs> cool. Hey, with that, um, I would love for you guys to give a a high level recap um, of just who you two are, and I can I can give you cues if you want me to do that. Um, what's your your background, and then what is Forecaster, your company? Would love pretty much all elevator pitches of those real quickly before we dive on in. So Logan, why don't you, you start wanna- us off? Oh, I'll go. Yeah, I'll kick us off. Uh, so uh, what's going on, everybody? I am Logan Burchett, uh, co-founder and COO of Forecaster. And I guess I'll start uh, with a little bit of background before we jump into, into Forecaster stuff. So uh, I am a uh, Lexington native. I lived in Lexington my entire life, basically, up until the, the past three years or so. Um, so Love the city, love coming back whenever I can. And I love what uh, you guys are doing over here at Awesome Inc. as well. Um, but I uh, actually went to college just down the road from you guys uh, over at Transy, uh, Transylvania University. I majored in economics. It was a great time. Um, graduated and had some trouble finding a job. Decided I wanted to go into big finance, which there's not a ton of big finance jobs in Lexington. Uh, so I actually went to go get my MBA at Xavier uh, and then made my way back to Kentucky. Um, and worked at the Kentucky Pension Fund for two years, which is a lot of fun. Um, but ultimately decided that 
Uh, I think like you guys, uh, I was a big fan of startups. I wanted to, I wanted to work with startups and I was always fascinated by entrepreneurs and just the, uh, just the concept of taking nothing and then building a business out of just an idea. Uh, so I went and worked at a company called Venture First uh, here in Louisville and helped a bunch of companies with financial modeling, uh, just really all aspects of finance. Uh, you know, most founders aren't, aren't strong in finance. And uh, so, you know, I was kind of a fractional head of finance for a lot of these companies. Uh, and that's kind of where I cut my teeth, learned how to build financial models. And uh, it's also where I met Steven. And, uh, you know, that's, that was really the catalyst that started, uh, the, the company really. So that's a little bit about me. That's awesome. I love them. Thanks, man. Steven or yeah, Steven, why don't you go ahead and take that? Yeah, sure. Hey guys, I'm uh, Steven Plappert. I'm from Louisville. Uh, I live most of my life here. I actually went to college in Lexington as well. I went to UK. I studied mathematical economics and, uh, thought I wanted to go into big finance like, like Logan, but uh, ended up starting companies right out of college. We had a, a, a company called Fantasy Hub uh, that was a daily fantasy sports company that I ran for three years um, into 2016. We actually got that company into Techstars. Uh, so we moved down to Austin, Texas for a year in 2015 to go through the Techstars program down there, um, which for those that aren't familiar is a very uh, prestigious uh, startup accelerator um, that we were very fortunate to have gone through. And um, yeah, it's a great experience then. And uh, company ended up ended up working out. About a year later, uh, we shut it down. I moved back home. I spent the last uh, three years uh, doing this kind of fractional head of finance work, like Logan was doing. Uh, met him at Venture First, uh, the startup that we had worked for here in Louisville for a few years. And um, like you said, we kind of used that that background to uh, you know come up with the idea for Forecaster and launch the company, uh, which we did uh, earlier this year. And uh, we took this company through TechStars as well. And for those that aren't familiar, which is probably most of you, uh, Forecaster is an online uh, financial modeling company. So we help other founders build really great investor grade and financial models. Um, we do that through our online platform um, that allows them to kind of save time, impress their investors, raise money more easily and, and run their business better. So um, I am good at uh, startup finance, operations, kind of systems, business development, fundraising, uh, I don't write any code, but other than that, um, I'm pretty dangerous. So, humble brag. I like it. Well, hey, um, Stephen, you went and touched some of it already, but we'll we'll circle back. So, my goal for this, and ideally the people who are tuning in, we're grateful for their time. They want to hear about your journey, and part of it, um, I know for us at Awesome Inc., a lot of us have been having uh, Disney movie marathons, and so that's kind of the name, like the Tech Stars and Beyond. One of them was Toy Story that we watched, and. Uh, that's exactly what I would like to hear about. So again, a lot of people in the startup world know Techstars, Y Combinator, some of these big organizations that have the like the, the sexy appeal to them that that is a milestone you want to hit with your company. That is a sign that you guys are credible, you've achieved something, and you have been there twice, my friend. And again, that is really cool. And more than anything, I see this as a launching pad that you guys have been able to get to and then propel yourselves further. So Stephen, with that... Um, would love to hear about your your prior experience, some of the nitty gritty with Fancy Hub, how it took you to get in, and then ultimately would love for you to set that up with how did your first experience with TechStars launch you to start company number two? Because I know you had some some time where you were like, I want nothing to do with a startup right now, but it was such a good experience you went back for a second time. So can you give us some of that narrative of your first time, then how it got you to where you guys ended up recently? Yeah, I would, uh, I'd love to do that. And uh, I think our, you know, my, my experience kind of in, in starting Fantasy Hub, and I think is the experience with a lot of first time founders is an experience of kind of an incredible amount of grit, kind of an ignorance is bliss, and just kind of working really hard doing not all the wrong things, but definitely not, you know, running the company uh, the way that, you know, a second time founder or a serial entrepreneur does it. There's a lot of stuff that you just can't possibly know how to do going into entrepreneurship. You're doing basically everything's new. And so you're having to figure a lot of that stuff out. And the reason why I was doing, I think a lot of wrong things at the time too, is because I personally, when I started my entrepreneurial career, got into a trap that a lot of entrepreneurs fall into, which is the trap of feeling like they're too busy to get out into the world and to go meet people and to build a network and to really like connect, um, whether that be with other founders or investors, partners, et cetera. 
there's this kind of feeling of I've got too much stuff to do. I've got to stay here at my computer. Um, I made that mistake kind of in, in fantasy. It was the, one of the biggest mistakes that we made. Um, and in terms of getting into tech stars, uh, I credit a lot of that to my co-founder, Andrew. He really had the vision that uh, tech stars was something that was really impactful and something that we should get into. He did a lot of work and kind of curating a very human, very personal uh, video to kind of get our foot in the door in their application process. Uh, and their acceptance process is completely driven off people. They accept people, not companies. Their, their, their like, um, way of talking about it is that they look for team, 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 market idea, team. That's their, uh, that's their scorecard. So um, I think a lot of it was just being original and being yourself, being authentic, you know, being authentic um, and clearly communicating the fact that you can execute well as a founder and kind of showing that potential is the way that, that we got in uh, to that program. And it really did kind of change my career trajectory, mostly because Techstars uh, totally, you know, performed a 180 on me in the, in the, in the context of understanding the importance of human capital, just how important it is, whether you're the CEO of a company or a founder of a company, or even just an employee to like get out there to talk to a lot of your peers, talk to experts, talk to uh, you know, mentors and really, you know, engage with the community. Uh, it's so helpful. It helps you in so many kind of serendipitous ways, unexpected ways. Um, and I credit Techstars to that. So like after that experience, I had a total new mindset when it came to starting companies and just running my business life in general. It was a very people-driven mindset. Um, and I've carried that mindset through to today. And it's been a big, big help in starting Forecaster. Um, because like you said, Garrett, yeah, after I shut my first company down, it's an incredibly emotional experience. Um, it's a very negative experience in a lot of senses. You feel like a failure for those who haven't done it. It can be very, very tricky, especially with your first company because a lot of founders have an, a, a tendency to attach their identity to the company. And I did that as well. So very difficult. And so I knew at that time I wanted to take some time off, but when I was able to kind of recharge the batteries and, and get back after it, this people driven approach was really helpful because when we first came up with the idea for forecaster, rather than building it in a vacuum for, you know, 12 months or whatever, and not wanting to talk to anybody until everything was perfect. I led with a people first approach. I mean, we told everybody we knew about the company before we were even anything. And we put people on an update list and kept them in the know. Uh, and that was a big way, reason why we got into this, you know, most recent Techstars program with Forecaster, uh, because I had met the managing director when I was in Techstars before. And I just felt like for this company, given our kind of target customer profile, uh, Techstars would be a really big partner for us. So I really wanted to try to get ourselves into Techstars. And so I hit up, you know, Ryan Cooter 15 months before we applied. And I told him about the company. I got him on an update list. He got 15 updates from us, you know, like clockwork every month. And so by the time we even applied for the program, he already had over a year's worth of working history with me. Uh, he could clearly see that, that we could execute. Um, and, I, and I think that was a big part in us getting into the program. And, uh, and it's been hugely successful for us so far. So um, yeah, I think that's kind of an overview of, of, of my last company and how, how Techstars has really you know, helped us move this company forward as well. Man, that is, that is goodness right there. Thanks for sharing that. Logan, I'm going to pass the proverbial ball over to you, brother. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys is what all did you do behind the scenes to make your company get to a stage where you were credible, you know, fancy air quotes, to tech stars? Again, Lo Steven, you just said that they, uh, they hire people, not companies. What did you guys do as people to make tech stars really find you valuable, find that you were worth investing their time, the resources, their network into? I will, uh, I will first credit Steven because I, I honestly think that the biggest thing uh, that we did early on was get uh, Ryan and the tech stars team on our company update list. I mean, by the time that we had the idea, like Steven said, I mean, they had already had multiple points of contact. We'd kept them very much in the loop. We were very transparent with what was happening. And I come to learn through going through tech stars that like, that is one huge thing that they preach is just transparency and communication. And they are very network driven. So just building a network and then like cultivating that network and just making sure that everybody is bought in and engaged. And we did that with tech stars right away. And uh, like I said, I credit Steven for that because it would not have been my uh, like first thought or first approach, but since he had been through it, that was kind of how he led it. Um, so that was huge. I think that that was probably the biggest factor. Uh, but I would say that the secondary factor is the fact that we were able to 
kind of showcase ourselves as domain experts in the business that we were building. So Stephen and I weren't just two guys off the street trying to solve a financial modeling problem. You know, we had lived in startup finance for the past three years. And we had built hundreds and hundreds of financial models. We'd seen all types of businesses. We'd worked with all types of founders. And we knew this problem better than everybody else. And they knew that we knew this problem better than everybody else. I mean, we could tell them horror stories. We could we could cite real world examples. We could show them models that we built, you know? So uh, the fact that we had done it so long and so many times, I think, just gave us a ton of credibility. And one thing that I do think that we did a really good job of was kind of uh, whenever we were talking with tech stars, you know, we communicated our roles in a way that I think made sense to kind of present the team in the way that uh, would showcase it as being the most efficient. So, for example, you know, Steven's a serial entrepreneur. I mean, he has built companies before. And so he knows that process. He knows pitfalls to avoid. I've learned a ton myself and just kind of watching Steven and building this company. But that was kind of his his value prop in the Techstars application process was he has grown he has grown a user base. He has started a company. He kind of knows the ropes there. Whereas me, you know, I have a finance MBA, built hundreds of financial models, seen a bunch of deals. So my value prop or the way that, you know, I kind of position myself as being that finance expert. So, you know, right there, the two business sides of the house, we have kind of like a growth ops expert, somebody who's known, who knows about starting companies and then a finance expert in the financial modeling space. So even though Steven himself is, is really well versed in finance, that's kind of like how we, how we pitch the team. Um, and then also on a, the, the technical side, we have two amazing technical co-founders. We have Jonathan Frazier, uh, who is incredibly, um, he's, he's a very, uh, really good at data and he's, he's really an impressive data person. He, he went to MIT. Um, he kind of, he taught at the software guild for a while. He went through Draper U, uh, out over in California. So, you know, we pitched him as kind of this data guy that could build out a lot of the analysis and, and, and the really interesting, uh, things down the road. And then we have Steven Ams, who is another co-founder who's great at design UX, uh, and Steven knew him really well and Techstars knew him well because he had gone through Techstars with Steven. So uh, positioning the team uh, was really, really big for us, as well as, like I said, those early and often communications and showcasing our domain expertise. Man, that was good to hear. Uh, it sounds like you guys have continued to keep building your network and your team's growing, which is exciting. One thing that stuck out to me before I ask out what you guys see as a mystery question is how does transparency as co-founders in your late 20s how does that come across in a program where you are having, you know, people like speed dating sort of sense with mentors and, and potential investors? Like, how does that transparency not make you guys feel frustrated or potentially even insecure with where your company is versus where you would like it to be? For me, I try to be as humble as possible and just think like we are building a startup. There's going to be a lot of things wrong. We're going to need help in a lot of areas. And in my opinion, one of the big problems that a lot of companies face is whenever they try to showcase themselves as something that they're not, and they try to be more mature than they are. But if you just kind of own it and say, you know, we are a startup, we have a lot of issues, we are building as fast as we can, and we're going to have problems and just commit to being transparent to that. And then just asking for help whenever you need it. I mean, I think it's just more of a mindset thing than anything. And then uh, outside of that, it's just kind of like the operations of like, how do you go about being transparent? And one of the ways of being transparent and having a cadence of transparency is just through uh, monthly updates and just having regular communication with all of the people that you know and that you yeah. that you interact with. Yeah. And I just wanted to add that like, uh, I have kind of a take on this. So I call it puffer fist syndrome, which is that like, I think a lot of founders like just have this innate like feeling that they always need to be puffed up and they always need to be showing that like there's some big company and they've got it all figured out. And I think that it actually works against you while as a CEO, especially, but just as a founder, you do have to puff up sometimes and you do have to show that like, you've kind of got it all. And so sometimes you do have to kind of omit some information, but typically people prefer transparency, authenticity, honesty to kind of what they can see right through, which is a lot of times when founders kind of puff up in this way, it's very obvious that of course you don't have it all figured out. I'm, an, I'm a serious investor. I know that startups don't have it all figured out. And so I can see right through it. It's a hollow shield. 
Uh, and so that tells me actually as an investor that you actually don't know what you're doing. Um, and so that it kind of can work against you in that way. And so Logan and I are very transparent uh, because we understand that a, like it tends to yield better results. If you are, if you're open about your problems, you're going to get help to solve those problems, which you need. Um, it communicates actually better to investors. Um, and it just, it just kind of, a, for me, it feels right as well. It's just something where um, I think that, you know, ideas are a dime a dozen execution is the difficult piece. So, you know, being overly transparent rarely has any kind of side effects. Um, and it's just, it feels good to get some stuff off your chest that way sometimes as well, you know? Yeah, that is, that's so good to hear. I love the, the two different perspectives, which actually sets me up well for the, the mystery question. So I wanted to learn from you guys, what was your, your best success? So, you know, using that superlative, the best success you guys had while in Techstars could be as your company, could be personal. And then what was your worst failure? I, I could take a stab at the best success. Um, and it actually didn't come. This is, this is my opinion of our best success, just because I think it's the thing that I'm the most proud that I'm the proudest of, which was uh, we actually had two really, really great companies in our, our cohort, um, Simba and the Crafters Box. And they were in the middle of raising a round. And we, Stephen and I, jumped in and helped them a lot with their financial modeling, kind of like while we were building the platform. And uh, we worked alongside them, spent a lot of hours just kind of like helping them out. And at the end of this process, they had what we thought to be like a really, really strong financial model. And uh, about a month later, whenever they were kind of wrapping up their round and getting a lot of their checks in, they came back to us and they said that we were one of the like biggest reasons that they're able to close their round and, uh, and, and do so well in their fundraise. And that just felt really good to me that I could actually make an impact and, and help a, a founder that I respected so much. I mean, I respected both of them, uh, you know, a ton. And uh, so I think that that was like my proudest moment. Um, and, you know, it, it really energized me to continue to build out and, and try to help more founders just like we helped them. Um, so I, that, in my, from my view, that was a big success. I don't know, Stephen, if you had another one or yeah, I actually, um, I think that's a, that's a fantastic one. And another big success that I uh, peg ourselves to is um, just kind of our ability to really create a lot of goodwill within the Techstars network. So with any network, um, really, you can't go in there asking for stuff. You need to go in there giving stuff uh, and you need to kind of, I call it make deposits before you can make withdrawals. And so um, I think when it comes to leveraging a network, you need to offer something. You need to bring something to the table. And Logan and I really led the entire Techstars program with kind of a huge focus on just giving, uh, especially because we were in product development. We didn't try to sell folks on our product. We didn't try to get them to buy our product. We would go into situations with lots of Techstars founders, and we made ourselves very available for this just to help with financial modeling, to dig into Excel, to help them build a model, to advise them, to, to guide them, to even do some work for them uh, completely for free. And I think that created a lot of goodwill within this ecosystem already. And we're seeing that kind of fly back at us in unexpected ways. Um, so I think we, we had a lot of success in kind of leading in that way with this kind of give first mantra that Techstars has, um, that it will allow us to really like gain a lot of, of kind of reciprocity back from that in the future. Um, so that, that was another big, big success. And I think, you know, it like, I think there are, there's like definitely some failures. I mean, we're very early in the company right now. And so because we're pre-market and stuff like that, and honestly, just because of the, 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 uh, you know, really awesome way that we've started the company with plenty of capital and a good founding team, like we haven't made a ton of missteps really quite yet. Um, but one thing that I would denote maybe as a failure is just that we did go into tech stars um, and even before tech stars kind of with uh, a less than, let's call it less than optimal process around product development and kind of the understanding of that. And so Logan and I had to eat our words on a number of occasions where we thought the product was going to be out by this time and, and it wasn't. And then by this next time and it wasn't. And, you know, now we're, now we're just getting to the point where we're really releasing the product in earnest and getting customers on it. And so that was difficult at times to have to basically um, kind of go back on your word and say, yeah, I thought it was going to be out here, but, you know, kind of gracefully deflect it. Um, so I think that was a mistake that we made. I think, 
early on, we needed to have a better process for understanding just the sheer volume of work that needed to be done in order to finish the product that, uh, and go to market. And that would have given us a better kind of line of sight on when that product would be available. Uh, one of the big reasons why we kept missing the date was because just a lack of scoping, which was uh, partly Logan and I needing to break things down and, and better specify what we needed to get done. Uh, and then the dev team as well, kind of taking that, breaking it down into digestible chunks, moving it into like a system, like a Kanban board um, to track everything through the completion, which is a process that we have now that really Logan and Jonathan have, have taken the taken ownership of putting together uh, and it's really effective. So um, yeah, that's what I'd say on, on the failure side. Techstars was a huge asset in creating that process and kind of solving that failure. And uh, I'll echo you, Stephen, like if we, like Stephen, uh, you know, having been through Techstars twice now, I mean, this is the second time around, we were able to navigate a lot of the pitfalls that a lot of people make in Techstars, which I think the biggest one is just not engaging hard enough in the network because the network's their biggest asset. Um, and they'll, they even say that, that that is like their thing is like a network. Um, and we just kind of like dove right in and went like all in on the network, met with everybody, got everybody on our update list and everything. So it was very product focused and it wasn't even necessarily a failure. It was just kind of a bummer that we didn't have a product that we could sell while in tech stars, um, which, you know, is kind of just is what it is, but, uh, but yeah, we're, we're here now and, uh, you know, we're in a good spot. I could listen to you guys talk all day long. That's, that's so good. And some of those reasons I asked those questions, one, you guys are so young, like you said, but you've also accomplished so much. And so that's cool to hear your, your successes. I, the fact that you can help other companies is such a special, such a special recognition that you guys can claim. That's very cool. And the whole, yes, give before you get mentality. That's huge with our company I mean, with our ecosystem. And then also, Steven, I know you've talked a lot about just go meet people, go have coffees with literally anybody and anything and see if you can add value. So really respect that you guys are living those out so well because that does result in success. So, which is really cool. And then, uh, yeah, last thing, want to see if you had any final remarks. This is where we're going to transition, you know, and go beyond the tech stars aspect. So if you have any other, any nuggets of wisdom or any experiences regarding tech stars, we'd love for you guys to throw those in here before we move on. Yeah. I'll throw one thing out there, which is that, um, if you're a startup founder out there and you've got a company and you're even um, slightly, you know, considering uh, applying to Techstars or an accelerator like that, you absolutely should. Uh, it just is a phenomenal program. It's totally a career play. It just like for me, you know, right. I mean, fantasy had failed. It was a failed company, but for the three years after that, I still was able to engage that network and get a ton of value out of it. Even, even without having a new company that's now in Techstars again, it's, it's a really incredible thing. And, and I just want to say that if you are considering applying, please talk to Logan, Logan and I, um, I mean, we, we could, we would be happy to kind of share with you some more insights on, on how to, uh, you know, really get that application kind of nice and polished. And, uh, right now my record's pretty good. I'm batting a thousand, uh, you know, two for two. So, uh, you know, if, if it's probably blind luck, but just in case it's not, you know, c come talk to me. <laughs> Well, that's all for part one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be on the lookout for part two. We'll see you soon. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesome Inks Podcast. And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevere and a few members from our community who provide the music that you hear in this show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. Or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in. Let's start something awesome together. You guys rock. We'll see you next time.